One thing about me is you don't get a dog from Craigslist or you'll end up in a Walmart parking lot talking to a man who can't write or read and has a document saying it has all its shots and you say, are you sure? When's his birthday? But he can't read or write, so you say it's okay. And he says he doesn't have money for his family to eat, so you give him some money and you take the dog. You go home and the dog gets really sick, so you take him to the vet and find out he has worms. And you say that's okay, but he's still really sick, so you take him back to the vet and find out he has parvo. And the vet said he probably won't live very much longer and you feel really scared and you stay up all weekend nursing him back to health sticking ivies in his back and giving him mama moxicillin and you all play music on the guitar and you're scared if he falls asleep that he won't wake back up so you end up surviving the weekend so you take him back to the vet and they say he's okay and he'll probably be 80 pounds and you say this is supposed to be an Australian Shepherd and they said no this dog is definitely not an Australian Shepherd and you say that's okay and then do a DNA test and it turns out that he's a lab pit chow rock wild and much more okay one thing about me is if you don't text me i will reread all our texts just to see what went wrong and i'll start to overanalyze and i will start to think that maybe you don't like me anymore so i'll go on instagram to see if you watch my story okay well you're active on instagram and you watch my story so i'll post another story to see if you watch that one too and then the thing about me is my first name is a letter my first name is just the letter D, not D with two E's, just the letter D, which means that I have to go through this Sisyphusian nightmare every time I buy a train ticket or try and buy something online or file my taxes because the computer will say, please enter a first name that is valid. And I'm like, fuck you. My name is valid. But then they say, no, it has to have at least two letters to be a valid name. So then I have to go back through all the paperwork or all of the forms and add a period after the D to make it two letters. But then everyone thinks that the D stands for something. The D stands for nothing. It is just D. I went to my birth certificate just to check and confirm that my first name was just the letter D, but when I looked at it, it said my name was D, period. My parents did the same thing, because in 1997, the computer system that printed out birth certificates couldn't handle a one-letter first name, so they put the period, so legally I have this period in my name, so it looks like it stands for something, but it doesn't. And it's really confusing and makes my life weird, so I just go by my middle name, which is Henry. Yeah, okay. One thing about me is when I was 16, I started to get my period way too much. Like, I'd be bleeding for 10 days and then off it for 10 days. Basically, I was bleeding for half of the time. So when I was 17, my doctor put me on the pill but that didn't work so we tried a different pill and continued the cycle so to speak for the next two years and nothing would solve the problem so when i was 19 i got my first iud and it totally worked for a year and a half and then the bleeding came back so i went back to the doctor and she did an internal ultrasound and she was checking for cysts or fibroids or something like like that and they also tested my blood to see if all my hormones were out of whack but everything looked fine and I would just cry all the time because my body was broken and no one knew why they took the IUD out and put me back on the pill and that didn't work so well either because then I was bleeding so much that I became anemic and all of my joints hurt and I had no energy so then I went back to the doctor and they gave me a new IUD and then also put me on the pill at the same time. At this 
point, it kind of felt like some sort of biblical punishment for having had premarital sex. Anyway, the cycle continued until I got my second COVID vaccine and then I had a weird heavy period and then everything was normal. So I might be microchipped, but at least I'm not bleeding all the time. It's my new addition. A one thing about me was when I was like nine. Which means like I was 11. Yeah, that sounds about right. We were at a national park and we decided to climb on some hay bales. What a crazy fun time. So we got to the top and we were running around and we were like seven meters above the ground. And for some strange reason, I decided to jump on my brother's back. A very bad idea. So she climbed on my back and I lost my grip. And we realized that it had totally gone to shit. And I hit a wire on my way down. So I was winded. I was injured on the ground. And my head hit the only rock on the ground, which was quite a shock. And as I was dying of windedness, <laughs> it really, really hurt, and there was a mess. So I got up, and I saw my sister, and I realised she couldn't breathe at all. So I ran inside to get my parents, and probably ran into a wall. <laughs> but he didn't notice that his face was bleeding. So as he got mum and dad, it was misleading. They were like, if this happened to him, what happened to her? Is she okay? Is she alive? Oh my God. So my face was pouring with lots of blood as I took them outside and there I stood next to my sister who still couldn't breathe and they genuinely thought they were gonna be bereaved. But luckily I was just winded but if it had gone wrong I could have been split in half. <laughs> so you could have lost your entire torso and my neck could have broken genuinely. Who knows? So this is a warning to all you kids who think that hay bales are the best business. They're not. Don't <laughs> climb too high, too high. Reach for the sky. <laughs> you might die. <laughs> That's our tale. <laughs> yeah, 100%. One thing about me is I used to weigh 300 pounds. And when I got out of high school, I lost almost half my body weight. And after many years, of working really hard, I said, I should get a plastic surgery to remove my extra skin. So I went and booked a circumferential body lift, which means they took a bunch of skin from my front and my back. And when I went in, I was really excited, but it wound up being the most traumatic experience of my life. So I went in for my surgery and it took a little bit longer than I expected. And when they pulled me out of my anesthetic, they had a hard time. So instead of being in the hospital for just one night, I wound up staying there for an entire week. They had to give me two blood transfusions and it took me a long time to walk again. But then finally I went home and everything was fine and I was on a bunch of pain meds and then I stopped taking them. And then one day I woke up in the middle of the night and I was screaming in pain and didn't know what was wrong. So I went to the hospital and they did a blood culture and took some blood tests and then they sent me on my way. Then they called me the next day in the middle of the night and they said, come back immediately, you have a septic blood infection. So I went back and they checked me into the hospital and I worked with the infectious diseases team. And I said, am I gonna die? And they said, we're gonna do everything we can. And I was like, what the heck? For like two seconds, I had the body that I always wanted and now suddenly I might not have a body at all because I might die. So I stayed in the hospital and then they sorted it out and they injected me with a bunch of different antibiotics and they sent me home on a portable IV where I sat at home and did it at home for a few weeks. And then they took it out and I was really satisfied with the results and all the doctors were amazing and I'm so grateful that it happened, but it was very traumatic and I didn't expect it. But if I had to do it all again, I probably would. One 
thing about me is that when I was 18, I was walking through the woods at sunset alone, and I had veered off the trails, and I am night blind, so in hindsight, that was a dumb thing to do. Picture this. I am in a long red skirt and white blouse holding a lit red candle in my hand and I come across a bunch of needles on the ground and I think to myself, hey, that's kind of weird. And I hear a sound, I turn around and there is a man and of course I start running away from this man. I am wearing flip flops and they happen to break and a bunch of rocks happen to cut up my foot. I am bleeding everywhere as I am running and I'm looking through my purse to see if I can find a weapon and the only things in my purse are my dying phone and a bag of my best friend's teeth. So that's not helpful and I keep running until I find the railroad tracks and I run on the railroad tracks for like a mile and I happen to step on railroad spikes and they go through my foot and I am now bleeding more and I run until I find civilization but here's the thing i am on active railroad tracks and i am 40 feet above civilization and i do not know how to climb down and the people i found think i'm trying to kill myself so i'm like guys this is not very helpful so i call my mom on my still dying phone and she picks me up and i go home and i fall asleep the next morning wake up to a picture of this man on my dining table and i say hey parents how did you know who this was and they say because he was on the news and he tried to kill a man in the same woods just hours after you left with a machete and i say huh i did not like this information and i go to college the very next month one thing about me is when i was 13 i went to victoria's secret for the first time i was with my friends looking at bras and i picked up a blue sparkly one and I was like wow this is pretty and then an old man came up to me and said I like that and I said thank you I think it's pretty and then I looked at the price tag and said but not for that price put it down and the old man said oh I can get that for you and I was really sheltered so I thought this man was just being really nice so I let him buy me a bra, and I said, thank you. That was so nice. He said, sure, and kissed me on the cheek, and he asked for my number, but I didn't have a phone yet. So I said, oh, I don't have a phone. You got my mom's number. <laughs> this man said, what? <laughs> He said, yeah, I text through my mom's phone, because I don't have one yet, I'm not old enough. <laughs> and he said, how old are you? <laughs> I said, I'm 13, how old are you? <laughs> and this man, <laughs> and he got really pale, <laughs> and he turned like this, <laughs> and ran away. <laughs> and that's the story. <laughs> of how I accidentally conned an old man into buying me a bra. <laughs> One thing about me is that six years ago, I went to a house party for a guy from high school, and there were other guys from high school at this party, but I didn't know any of them because I didn't talk to people, because it was an all-boys Catholic high school, and I was the only out gay guy at that school, but there was this one guy at the party that I thought was cute, even though he wasn't. He just played hockey, so I was like, ooh, but the night goes on. And he is so damn straight that I don't even bother, but then we play. Spin the bottle, I know, but he keeps landing on me. So we peck on the lips and his friends go crazy like, whoa, gay people. And it keeps happening. So by the end of the night, we are alone behind the staircase and I just go for it. And he just goes for it. Now we're making out. 
hardcore for like over an hour and his friends are like whoa gay people again then we exchanged numbers and we set up a date but he stands me up but i have no self-respect so he reached out again so i said hell yeah let's hang out again because i felt so he's my plus one to my best friend's birthday party and after the party we go back to my dorm and we have the sex. And he ghosts me again. And the very next week, the first friend throws another house party. And he's there again, but he's ignoring me the entire fucking time. So our mutual friend... Hold on. So our mutual wolf friend says, why are you ignoring Colin? And he goes, oh, I don't know that F slur because he thinks I'm out of earshot, but I'm not. So I come back in the room and I'm like, oh, you don't know me, but you were moaning my name the other night. So he starts crying and he leaves the room. How the fuck do you Uno reverse the victim card on the person you just F slurred? but I have no self-respect. So he texts me again, cause he has no friends and he knows I have friends. So he uses me for parties and kisses other people at these other parties. Even on New Year's Eve, when the ball drops at midnight, he's kissing other people. And this goes on for two years, cause I hate myself. E okay. I've been waiting 16 years to tell this story. That's not exact math. I'm not good at math. Anyway, one thing about me is when I was a kid, I had an interesting experience of finding out what a hickey is. See, I was in elementary school and I was on the bus and there were these two boys who used to like terrorize us. They didn't like my older brother, so they were mean to me and my sister. And one day we were getting off the bus and they dead ass wound up and hit her, like punched her in the stomach. So then we went home and we told my brother what happened and he was like, hell no. So he chased the bus around the corner to the next place where it stopped. And he was like, if you ever touch my sister again, you will wish that you had not. But the school did nothing except for give him a three day suspension from the bus. Literally, they did nothing. What the fuck? So now, the next year, my sister graduated elementary school, so now I'm stuck on the bus with these two kids, alone, by myself. And every day, they would call me names, and every day, I would tell my teachers, and nobody would do anything about it. I don't understand this to this day. So one day, I'm on the bus, and they're calling me names, and they're calling me a bitch, and I'm crying, and I'm sucking on my arm, because I'm a kid, and that's what kids do. But my arm turned red, and I was like, that's weird, because I didn't know what a hickey was. I really can't make that clear enough. I go home, and my brother's like, what the fuck is going on who did that to you and the light bulb went on i was like that kid the one who hit our sister yeah he hit me someone needs to teach this kid a lesson why did i say that so then my dad came home and we had put ice on my arm and when you put ice on a hickey it turns purple so my dad was like ho ho i want to meet this kid's dad and he put me in the car and we drove to this kid's house and my dad is 6'5 and kind of scary looking and this kid's dad was a little man and he was very nervous and he was like listen I know that my kid is a problem and we're getting him help and he's been to detention so many times and all this stuff my dad was like I don't care about your personal life tell your kid to keep his hands to himself or I'm holding you responsible yike so we went home and I'm racked with guilt and my sister just got home from basketball and I was like Listen to this psychotic lie I told. Hold on, the track's ending. So I told my sister what I just did, and she was like, holy shit, Sydney, go tell mom and dad that's crazy. So I was like, you're right. So I go into the kitchen, and my mom's like, I'm making pizza bagels because they're your favorite, and you had a hard day. And I was like, I don't deserve the pizza bagels. I lied. So I told them everything. And my parents looked at each other and then me, and they were like, if you promise never to tell another lie again, we'll let it go because this kid's a menace. But here's the best part. Later that night, we're sitting on the couch watching American Idol, and I get a phone call. So my mom hands me the phone, and it's this kid calling to apologize, and he knew he didn't hit me, and I knew he didn't hit me, and my parents now knew he didn't hit me, but his parents didn't believe him because he was so mean to everyone, and I still feel guilty about it to this day. I'm still... So